O God, hasten the arrival of Imam al-Mahdi and grant him good health and victory. America, there are two things you need to know tonight. First, Ahmadinejad is not lying when he says he wants peace. He really does want peace, but he thinks the Mahdi, their version of the Savior, is going to bring it. He conveniently leaves out all the parts about, you know, millions dying through war and famine first. And second, it doesn't matter if you believe this. He does. And those beliefs are guiding all of his actions. You don't have to understand it, but for the love of everything, for the love of our children, we must stop dismissing it. Michael Hirsch is a senior editor at Newsweek. Um, Michael... This guy spooks the hell out of me. He really does. First of all, um, first of all, he was talking about the family. It's the first thing he went for, which is exactly what evil would do. Go for the family and say, I just want to protect the family. What was it that jumped out at you about Ahmadi Majad's speech? Well, he did go on and on uh, about that, the sanctity of the family. Uh, you know, I think there's uh, code words for, uh, you know, uh, obviously an anti-homosexual bias uh, and uh, exploitation in the, in the Western media, as it's perceived in Iran, uh, of a woman's body. Uh, yeah, we I know think that, he's going for uh, capitalism. He's going for the right. movies. He's going for everything he it's says that we're exporting. Basic diatribe, yeah. Okay. Um, and then I found it interesting. He talked about how we are humiliating, again, the Middle East, which if anybody studies the Middle East, that is essential to understanding their motivation. But he went on and on about that. What else did you pick from it? Well, I mean, obviously he made his usual noises about uh, the Zionist occupiers uh, and the plight of the Palestinians, uh, which is a favorite theme of his, of course, and has gotten him into all sorts of hot water in his country, uh, into hot water and isolation, because uh, he's gone so far over the top in, in basically denying the Holocaust uh, and seeming to call for the destruction of Israel, though there is a lot of debate uh, over whether he meant uh, that uh, he was going to take an active part in it or whether he was just hoping it would happen. i got to tell you, man, I think we start taking these guys at their words. I mean, we kind of messed that one up with Hitler. Um, you wrote a great article on the charm offensive. This guy, I, I mean, I'm amazed by the left in this country how they just dismiss him. Well, they just, mm, whatever. And he's really somebody that you watch and the rest of the world will watch him and say, oh, look at him. He seems like a nice guy. He's talking about peace. Yeah. Well, look, I, I think there's general agreement, you know, in the media, the mainstream media, uh, uh, that uh, Ahmadinejad is uh, probably a bit unbalanced. Uh, he is <laughs> he is uh, uh, he's a radical, you know, religious uh, a uh, figure who's who's part of this movement that grew up at, out of 19, 1979 takes it very seriously, very literally. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, it's important to have some perspective. Uh, uh, first of all, the presidency of Iran is not like the presidency in the U.S. He doesn't yeah. have that kind of power. He doesn't have the power over their no, nuclear I, program. I know. I, Michael, I, I've, I've got to run, but I mean, it, correct me if I'm wrong. The power l l lies in the hands of the people who are even spookier, the clerics over there. Well, there, there's no question about yeah. it. Supreme Leader Khomeini. But, yeah, okay. but, yeah. All right, got to run. Thanks, Michael. Now let's go right to Ann Bayefsky. She is a senior fellow at the Hudson uh, Institute. And what did you think of his speech today? Well, his speech was he really laid down, uh, a real, as he declared war. This was nothing short of an open declaration. He said specifically the nuclear issue is over. As far as he concerned, the Security Council can butt out. He has no intention of of uh, abiding by its regulations and pr uh, principles or of the United Nations. He said for 60 years the rule of international law has been illegitimate because it was van uh, victors over, uh, over the vanquished. He rejected uh, Zionism. He said it was 60 years of illegitimacy. He put in, uh, the Holocaust into issue by s talking about how um, people had been imprisoned for their views, uh, historians. He's talking about Holocaust deniers. He is really, I mean, this guy, I've, I've been watching this guy for years, and, and um, there's, I mean, I just, I just don't have a good feeling about him and this speech. I thought it was very focused. Um, I thought, honestly, he was spooky as crap because he started out on the moral issues, and he was appealing to the religious zealots in the Middle East saying, they are corrupting your wives and your children. They are humiliating women. Uh, they are selling their very soul for the almighty dollar. Um, I mean, he was speaking their language. And then he went on 
to dismiss uh, to dismiss you know the international community. Why is the UN um, inviting him? Why? What? What? I mean, it's like he's the new Hitler, and they're bringing him and giving him all this credibility. Well, not only did they do that, they clapped. I mean, when they started off, he got a, a round of applause before he'd even opened his mouth. So this is his forum, the United Nations, 192 countries, 115 of them belong to the developing world, the non-aligned movement, and 56 of those, the largest single voting bloc, is the organization of the Islamic Conference. The UN is their playing field. They know it. He enjoyed every minute of it, and it's translated into six languages worldwide, put out on the website, there for you to, you know, review after the fact. Um, he's enjoying himself, and unfortunately, the United Nations is giving him that kind of platform. You say that he is a threat to civilization, and the UN is complicit in it um, because you, they're giving him roles to play. I mean, Iran is uh, playing a role on what is it on the uh, the leadership a role on racism, right? Well, the UN uh, the UN has given him. He is the vice chairman of the Disarmament Commission. Um, the, the man who's held banned on the acquisition of nuclear weapons is on a disarmament commission. The, the fellow who's, you know, the, uh, the world's l uh, leader, who, anti leading anti-Semite, is now on the uh, planning committee of the next UN anti-racism conference. What about the um, IAEA? Uh, um, are they, uh, is there any real chance that they're watching what they're doing with their program? Well, I think it was incredibly revealing. I mean, for a very long time I've written about uh, Mohammed al baradai who is the Egyptian head of the IAEA. He has been against sanctions. He's been playing, um, uh, inter running interference for Ahmadinejad at the United Nations, and he called him his great friend. Okay, buckle up, America. Here